With the popularity of tabletop miniatures booming right now, it's somewhat surprising that digital recreations of games such as Warhammer and Infinity have not appeared. That's what makes Moonbreaker, the new early access project from Subnautica developer Unknown Worlds, so appealing. It's a video game version of the full collect, paint and play hobby, complete with fun tactical battles and admirably detailed painting tools. Its 1v1 skirmishes are packed with personality as you combine the powers of vibrant sci-fi heroes to reduce your enemy's own to crumbling plastic fragments. But as I spend more time with Moonbreaker, I've begun to question its strategy potential, how it will develop over time, and its deeply concerning approach to microtransactions. Compared to the often complicated tabletop skirmish games from which it draws upon, Moonbreaker is refreshingly simple. Your sole aim is to defeat your opponent's captain, a high HP character with an array of special abilities. It's a goal that echoes card games such as Hearthstone, and that's not where the comparisons end. Moonbreaker is built on many of the same fundamentals as a typical CCG. You pick a crew of 10 miniatures, that's your deck, each of which costs Cinder, aka Mana, to deploy from your randomly arranged bridge effectively your hand. But the presence of a physical arena and the movement of miniatures adds, quite literally, another dimension to that structure. Four different maps provide a variety of obstacles around which you can plan your turns and combat engagements. From choke points that can be blocked off with landmines, to steam vents that can be hidden in to provide a cover bonus. Duking it out on those maps is a colourful collection of characters, drawn in a heroic style familiar to anyone who's played a minute of Overwatch. While their miniature nature means they forever remain in a static pose, there's a huge amount of personality in the way they move and attack. Sneaky characters skitter with rapid zigzags, while tankier units land heavy shots that erupt in bright particle effects. Combined with charismatic voice acting, Moonbreaker brings its hopeful sci-fi world, created by beloved author Brandon Sanderson, to life on the board, despite there being no in-match storyline to speak of. Ah, the art of surprise! <laughs> Every character has a particular role to play in battle, which is often augmented by a special ability. The most impressive are reserved for each of Moonbreaker's three captains. The centaur-like battle robot Extilia, for instance, can spin around in a circle and deal big damage to enemies that surround him, as well as bestow an energy shield to himself or allies. Regular crew members tend to have buffs. Deadeye is a gunslinger who can provide an accuracy buff to ranged characters, while drum dancer Lali can upgrade a melee miniature with the ability to attack twice in a row. These powers also cost sense which replenishes in increasing amounts at the start of each turn. So there's a simple but engaging resource economy to manage as you find a balance between calling in reinforcements and using your abilities. There's a lot of satisfaction to be found in discovering ideal ability pairings, but while there are clear overlaps between certain miniatures, the links are simplistic. Most units feel designed to act as solo warriors, rather than depend on a strategy that creates cohesion with every other character in the crew. This is likely due to the nature of the randomised bridge. If you don't draw two complementary units together, it can be hard to put their synergy to work. As such, a good crew is made up of characters who can largely be independent agents, but shine twice as bright when their ideal pairing also finds its way onto the board. In many ways, this limits the strategic depth of Moonbreaker, at least with its current roster. But right now, I actually really like the format. The unpredictability promotes short-term tactics and adapting to what's on the board at any given moment, rather than doggedly pursuing a pre-planned strategy. There's still plenty of room for clever plays and combos, but they rely more on effective use of individuals and positioning, rather than stacking up a complex multi-hero synergy. That said, I'm worried the emphasis on Lone Wolves could eventually cause Moonbreaker to grow static and stale, particularly if that approach doesn't evolve over early access. Going forward, I hope Unknown Worlds can maintain that strategic spontaneity while also creating more interesting cohesion across crews. Moonbreaker isn't totally devoid of long-term strategy though, it's just that you'll find it in the single-player cargo run mode rather than competitive matches. Starting with a pre-assembled six-member crew, cargo run sees you build out and enhance your team over five increasingly difficult matches against the AI. This is done by collecting crates that are randomly dropped into the arena, each of which contains a buff, perk or new character. This on-the-fly team building is hugely satisfying, and demands you make a wider variety of tactical and strategic choices each turn. You're planning as much for the next round as you are the current match or even turn. You can create truly monstrous builds in this mode, upgrading already formidable characters with mountains of extra hit points and outrageous damage potential. It's the most fun I've had with Moonbreaker, despite the focus being on its PvP mode overall. Keep that as a souvenir! <laughs>
As previously mentioned, Moonbreaker is a recreation of the collect, paint and play hobby. The collect part of that comes via a monetization system as ubiquitous as it is infamous nowadays. Loot boxes. To add new miniatures to your rosters, you need to open up booster packs, each of which contains a random selection of three characters. You can likely already see where the pay to win and gambling issues begin. Those with cash to spare will be able to open pack after pack in search of powerful characters, while those without will have to endure what currently feels like a slow slow and uneven grind to collect enough free currency to access the entire roster and any future characters added to Moonbreaker. To be clear, while this system provides the guise of a free-to-play game, Moonbreaker currently costs as much as Unknown World's own single-player adventure Subnautica. That price includes all three captain characters, a pre-assembled and pretty good crew of 10 miniatures, and enough booster packs to, theoretically, unlock the entire 41 character collection. But you are, of course, at the mercy of RNG. There is a concession currency for opening duplicates, which can be spent on specific models you don't own. But there's a nasty 5-tier rarity system that means duplicates often aren't technically duplicates. That means you could pull the same character up to 5 times before getting a genuine duplicate, which is frankly a absurd. The kicker? All rarity does is make minor cosmetic changes to a character's deploy and death animations. It's a system that's labelled as still in development, but one that's woefully inadequate when your money is potentially already at stake. The final component of Moonbreaker is its painting module, which is what really cements it as a proper miniatures game. Every model comes pre-painted in handsome default schemes, but you can take any miniature in your collection and create a whole new colour scheme. This is done with tools designed to replicate actual miniature art. Standard paints provide even coverage, washes pull in the recesses to create shadows, and dry brushing picks out the highest points of a model to add contrast and highlights. This works surprisingly well, creating characters with a genuinely authentic tabletop look. The system understands paint opacity, allowing for layering techniques like xenophil base coats and underpainting to be used, although the best results come from the very traditional base, wash and highlight three-step process. As someone who paints miniatures in real life, I'm genuinely impressed by the authenticity and flexibility of the tool, even if rotating the model and getting into the crevices can be a bit fiddly, and desperately wish I could bring its magic undo button into reality. Moonbreaker is a fun and approachable skirmish game with an emphasis on smart turn-by-turn -turn tactics. While it bears little resemblance to physical tabletop skirmish games like Warhammer 40k Kill Team and Infinity due to its simple format and reduced strategic depth, its use of brilliantly sculpted miniatures gives Moonbreaker a distinct personality. The detailed painting module only bolsters that, lending it an authentic hobby feel, but a loot box fueled microtransaction system tarnishes the experience, and threatens a future shaped around gambling currency on new characters. For the full written review of Moonbreaker, check out IGN.com. And for more early access thoughts, why not watch our Slime Rancher 2 or Terra Invicta reviews?